Welcome to the second Robotech Battle Report, brought to you by Get Some! Gamers into tactical simulations using miniatures. In this fight, Jam and I rolled up Dogfight as our mission. In Dogfight, you start off with one squadron on the board. In the start of turn 2, you can spend the command points to bring in up to half your remaining squadrons. And on turn 3, you can bring on the rest of your squadrons on. I'm playing the same force as the last Battle Report. JM switched up one of the squadrons to add in more artillery battle pods. We got the diagonal deployment zones. I'm on the left, JM's on the right. I deployed my destroids and JM deployed his squadron with Grell. I went first to move my right phalanx up after a successful command point to run faster. It got me into range. I moved the rest of my destroids up waiting for his next squadrons to come into play. After movement, I lobbed four missile blasts at the few battle pods in view. Jam, as normal, rolled success after success after success of knocking down three out of the four missile blasts. Only needed sixes, rolling one to two dice per blast. That's really supposed to happen, right? That's what the odds say? Yeah. Well, that's what happens. I was able to knock out two pods, but they're just going to show up at the start of the next turn, so it was not that big of a deal. Well, cost him a command point. whoop de doo On JM's turn, he just moved his Centrati battle pods up in to cover so that they would not be able to get blasted from mile one missiles that were coming his way. At the start of turn two, we both spent command points to bring on a squadron. He was going to bring on his artillery pods, and I was going to bring on my Valkyries. He also spent a command point to go ahead and bring on those battle pods that I had killed in the last turn. Go, Necromancer, go. I activated my Destroids and ran up, fired s some more missiles, and was able to destroy a couple more pods. I took a risk. Well, really, I did not just think about it, that he'd be able to bring on a second squadron of his artillery battle pods. So my Destroids were all clumped up and in the open. Good job, man. Good job. I actually was able to get a couple missiles through him and blew up a couple battle pods, but again, they're going to show up next turn. The blast template is pretty cool. I like the, all the little details on it, but you really need to like paint it up or put a little wash on it so that it makes it easier to find the numbers. Um, just a little suggestion for all those of you out there that are just in playing this, try and do a little bit of upkeep on your command point tokens and your battle blast template to make it look a whole lot better, and it just easier to read. JM activated his pod squads and moved them in such a way as to cover Grell from getting hit by the oncoming Valkyries. Of course, he only blocked the line of sight from my board edge. My Valkyries came on next, and I spent a couple command points for Fulker to move a bit faster. Remember how I said that he only protected Grell from one side? Well, Grell uh, was not protected on the other side, and Fulker went 30 inches getting behind Grell and setting up a perfect crossfire on Grell and the rest of his squadron. The Valkyries launched missiles at all the battle pods that they had crossfires on, but it really was to no avail, as as typical, Jam was able to make anti-missile save after anti-missile save after anti-missile save. Fulker did come through and was able to target Grell with everything and just pull the trigger, including his head lasers. That's how much I wanted Grell dead. And Grell just disappeared under the hail of fire. N nothing remained. Nothing. Jane was a little down at this, but he also knew that he had an ace up his sleeve. Something at least get him back into the game. Something I had completely forgot all about. He knew that he'd be having about four heavy artillery battle pods and four light artillery pods, or whatever, an obscene amount of artillery battle pods coming on. Right where I did not expect them to come in at, I thought they were going to come up by Grell to support Grell, but he had better plans, a much better place for him. Um... Yeah, not good for the Destroids. Not good at all. Poor Destroids. So, Jam 
pretty much gleefully just brought the these guys on and was just pointing out, he's dead, he's dead, he's dead. And sure enough, just like in Bye Bye Mars, these destroyers were just blowing up. Bathroom missiles were hitting them everywhere. These heavy artillery battle pods just said, I'm firing all four there. And my anti-missiles just don't shoot down missiles. So it was a good use of my missiles. Wait, no it wasn't. So, I lost two phalanxes, a defender, and both the tomahawks were pretty much... Uh, half destroyed. I thought they were fully destroyed, but they weren't as bad as I thought they were. Turn 3 starts with me getting initiative, but I also know that Azoni is going to come on. I have no idea where she's going to be coming. I'm thinking in the middle, but I don't know where. But I need to get my destroids going, because they're out in the middle of nowhere. They're going to just get blasted again. So they go in, move in, and just lay into those battle pods. My one defender with Freeman, three blast marker templates going down at strength eight. We're having good times as those battle pods start going down. Get a little counter battery action going on. Good time for revenge. JM, knowing that my destroids are pretty much done and that's where they're going to be, he decided to activate his Grail Squadron and surround Fulker. He wanted Fulker dead. No pineapple salad for Fulker. So he sur completely surrounded Fulker with all of Grail Squadron and just started firing, firing everything. He missed a few times. Those ones just were kind of bad for him. Fulker got those two natural dodges. Dodged. Dodged. Then more incoming fire. Dodge, 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 roll with impact, dodge, roll with impact. I think I spent like six command points just to keep Fulker alive. But alive he was at the end of this. We had a little discussion about how cool Fulker is. Like I said in the last report, JM just started watching the show, and he knows uh, how good Fulker is in the show, and that he kind of has plot armor until, of course, when he dies. Um, so he was still taunting about him the entire time not getting his pineapple salad, but he knew that it was going to be a rough chance. And we compared the 60 points. Fulker's worth 60 because he's 30 points base, 30 points plus his mecha. Killing off Grell compared to the alpha strike he had on my Destroids. And I thought it was about even. It wasn't. Grell's dying is so much worse than my five Destroids. My Valkyries go and go to save Roy. Not that he really needs saving. They sh shoot as much as possible. But missiles get shot down again. But this time we got some G11s and the free attacks from the UEDF Special Forces card. So he was able to get a lot of G11 shots in and kill off a lot of those battle pods. Not all of them, but I made a significant dent. This time I knew they would not be coming around. Well, at least that was the plan. Of course, when you roll lots of ones, it just doesn't matter how many shots you got going. Zoni came on to help out with the artillery pods with those destroids. So I was feeling a little iffy there. I was really hoping that my Freeman would be able to get a couple shots off at the clumped up artillery pods. But that wasn't going to happen. Jam brought him on and he asked me how much did my tomahawks have left. And remembering from what happened to the second turn, I knew that they took a beating, so I said, oh, they only have like four or five mega damage left. So he moved his battle pods as if that's how it's supposed to be. He sent two after uh, Dietrich and two after Freeman. But then when he started shooting, I realized I made a mistake. Really look at those cards. I normally look at the cards, but you need to do that. Just remember, always look at the cards when your opponent asks how many hit points they had left because he made this commitment to kill them, but he didn't have the resources anymore. He was able to knock down uh, Dietrich to only a couple hit points left, but he really should have been dead at this the end of this turn. Turn four starts with my destroids out in the open, and I really need to get initiative. I don't win it, so I try and steal it, but I fail. 
this point the camera kind of clicks off, so we miss a few parts of the battle. Those parts being the zone near killing a couple destroids, my Valkyrie is wiping out most of the battle pods in the squadron. John Mark gets his artillery pods going and activates the recon sensors, and then he finds out what the light artillery battle pods actually do. Looks like I'm not the only one who does not read his cards. <laughs> And I'm still not able to get any anti-missiles to work. So I go ahead and activate my destroids and double time my lone Spartan to get over there and go after that one last remaining battle pod. I try and get in the hand-to-hand, -hand, but do not quite make it. But I do shoot it down with some missiles. We will to see if the game continues, and it does. So at the start of turn 5, it's, we got all to play for. Centrati won the initiative. I don't try to steal it because I'm running low on command points. The Zoni squadrons move up and he targets the lieutenant. He wanted to kill a Fulker, but he thought he just could not get it with all the free dodges that he gets and I was saving all the command points to keep him alive. He was also trying to just get rid of any command points that I was, had. And I will say that this lieutenant had was quite the pilot. He was dodging left and right, right and left, up and down, all around, everywhere. The corkscrewing missiles were going all around his cockpit. He dodged all of his missiles. I didn't even bother trying with his anti-missile weapon. Even though I needed sixes to dodge, I was just, screw it. Anti-missiles are not working for me. Just roll out of the way. And he did. The only problem was that he also had ten of battle pods shooting at him. And just the weight of numbers, it became a point where, ah, I just don't have the command points to keep this guy alive. And that lieutenant went down in a blaze of glory. I activate my Valkyries and set up an attack run on Azonia. Folk had the honors, because that's how it should be, characters killing characters. And he avenged that poor lieutenant. The Law of Averages finally swung back to reality and Jam could not make any anti-missile rolls this entire turn. Battle pods explode like popcorn. It was a thing of beauty. At which point we pretty much called the game because Jam had nothing really left that could threaten me. I can just hide behind buildings to keep from getting killed, which is what I was going to be doing with my Spartan. So it was a win for the UEDF. The UEDF was able to kill one and a half squadrons, and the Centauri was able to kill half a squadron of destroids. Dogfight goes based off victory points, which is full squadrons and half squadrons, so it really wasn't as close when it came down to the points as we thought it would be. It was a fun game, both of us had a great time, we had lots of jokes going back and forth. The turning point was when Grell bit the big one. And that is all for this battle report brought to you by Gitsong, a gaming group in Arkansas, Tennessee. And as always, thanks for watching.